welcome to another episode of the Mad Luke of the Podcast. I'm the host, the one, the only, Magneto 7 in the building. It's me. And um, so I've been waiting. I've been waiting to give y'all this episode. Um, this was this was not brought to you by nobody, so we don't have to ha- worry about sponsor dollars. We're good tonight. And um, this lady, um, I'm, I'm gonna see how I can intro you because I want I'm gonna let you give up the spice. So I ran across one of her videos. I think I was having one of those man days. You know how you be like, man, I'm paying all these bills. I'm doing this, doing that. I don't feel appreciated. This, this, and that. And then. I came across this video and I was like, wow, she gets it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the one, the only Paradise Pairs in the building. What's up? What's up? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Thank you for having me. And we finally got everything situated. We went through several schedule changes. <laughs> we did. We did. I don't know if it was me or you. I, it, was I it do you? think part of it was me. Okay. But I remember when you first initially reached out to me, I went from having like a lot of time to having like no time. <laughs> no time is good though, sometimes. No yeah, time oh, is good sometimes. sometimes. So how you feeling today? I'm rested. Okay, rested. I'll take that. Mm-hmm. So tell the people before we we're gonna get all the preliminaries out the way, tell the people who you are. Well, I'm Paradise Pairs. I'm known for being your favorite controversial content creator. Um, and um, my, my, my disposition sometimes could be a little bit unorthodox for a woman to say the things that I say. I do think that there are many women who have um, tried to tackle and target audiences the way that I do, mm-hmm. but it hasn't been as successful for them to gravitate or be in the position that they're in. So I'm grateful for the audience that I have curated and even more grateful for those who I do not, you know, resonate with because at least I'm a conversational starter. I do create a lot of trends and a lot of trending topics and I've been doing it for quite some time. So meet me, Paradise Paris, your favorite controversial content creator. Now I want to go back, right? Let's go back. Were you always this type of person growing up, like grade school, high school? Really? Yes. So like, you... <laughs> I've never not been who I am today. Really? I mean, you can kind of see it in my content. Everybody who is like a social media influencer, they drop every day. They drop all the time. They got to have the audience like, nah, every time I drop, I hit. Ooh, I wish I had some gunshots, but I just give you the clap. I give you the clap. I mean, and, and I, I don't do any type of content. Like I don't water myself down. I don't try to like appease to a certain audience or appeal. No, like that's not my thing. Like even for my audiences, I'm not gonna allow men who want to stand behind me because they don't have the the gumption to say the things that I say because they have some fear of being canceled, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna allow them to debo and bully me into saying whatever they want me to say, but I'm also not gonna allow women um to minimize me or question my womanhood because I'm not in line with the woman code. Uh, so what it, what would you say like your train of thought when it comes to your views what does that come from what built that i'll be honest i just think that i'm old school okay i just think that i i also am a a critical thinker i have to make sense of everything everything doesn't need to be regurgitated from a book like when people are playing who's smarter than who everybody wants to pull stats and you know everybody wants to pull um you know their credentials in order to vindicate what they're saying in order to make it more more worthy of sticking especially since you have curators like Derek Jackson or you have people like you know uh Steve Harvey who have built their whole platform off of pandering and grifting (laughs) and then it's like when you have a person that is going to tell it like it is nowadays people utilize their educational um wherewithal in order to vindicate their message I don't have to do that even it. though I have, even though I do, like you, common sense. Like let, let's let's stop playing here. Like this is common sense. Like what we doing? You know, everybody talk a big game on social media, but in actuality, the real reason why people are utilizing the method of let me let me tell you my degrees, let me tell you my stats, let me tell you what I'm qualified in, it's because we kind of take social media approach like the pastor. You want people to walk it like they talk it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So where are you located? 
I'm in Dallas. Okay. Uh, were you born in Dallas? No, I'm from Arkansas. So still the South. It's still mm-hmm. the South. Okay. Because that your point of view is what I preach constantly, right? Mm-hmm. And I've been deemed as like a republic, a black Republican podcaster. <laughs> And I'm kind of like you, though. It's like, yo, what makes sense for this circumstance? And I can't I can't really bend and go with what media tries to feed me and what they want me to tell whatever the fan base like I've I've not gotten certain uh, brand deals because like how I view certain things. But but for me, coming up in the South, I don't care. Like, (laughs) yeah, I'm gonna miss out on the bread you know, up front, but it's like, yo, I'm going to stand on it. Whatever I... The fallacy override everything. Yeah, yeah. And then, too, like, with me having such a Southern upbringing, um, we all we always un- had the understanding um, mentality that you can make it with what you got. Right, you know? right. If you get more than what you got, good, but you you good with what you got. Like, um, that that's also, too, what keeps me authentic. Like, I don't sell nothing. I don't sell a thing. So you on my page because you want to be. I don't. I I didn't ask you for your money. Right. I didn't ask you to purchase from me. I'm not marketing nothing. That's my brand. I do do promotions and collaborate with people and things like that. But everything that I'm saying is me. Like, right. Just push the numbers. Right. So, and this is a whole nother conversation. I don't even know I want to have that conversation with you on air because I see the different potential in certain things. Like I'm a I'm a money guy. Like so I see the potential in branding and all that kind of stuff. So I'll, that's another conversation. But when it comes to social media, what made you start doing the posting that you're doing? Like nothing. I had always been doing it. And that's why I tell people like even now they I'll get the comments like oh she's looking for attention da da da. da. But my start came from Twitter. If anybody who's ever been on Black Twitter know exactly who I am, whether you hate me or love me, you you know exactly who I am. Some of the trending topics that have come from Black Twitter, I created them. Mm. Some of the most real renowned spin the wheel topics, I, I, I'm sure I got about five in the fold. Dang. So when they started making certain trends, like um, when they started doing the um, face offs on Twitter, I started that. Oh. I, I'm, I've definitely always been a pioneer in my own light. I've always been an influencer in my own light. I just so happen to gravitate to other um, b- platforms in order to branch out because I, I got something to say. Right, right, right. So I want to go back to something you said a little bit earlier about uh, the dudes kind of wanting to stand behind you <laughs> that don't have the balls to say what they want. What they, mm-hmm. I would say what they need to say, right? Because I feel like we're building a lot of, uh, I won't say sissy men, uh, non-aggressive, all all of the above, right? I feel like media that's being pushed right now is to, like, water everything down. Where mm-hmm. when I grew up, if you got smacked in the face, you go in that house, you tell your mama, you bet not come back in the house and tell her, I got smacked in the face unless you did something about it first. Mm-hmm. Right? So... How do you feel about that? As far as like the the dudes that can't really say what they want to say, going behind you and saying, "Well, look, she said it for us." Sometimes I feel like some of them are cowards mm. because yeah, you you feeling like you are in agreement with me, you trying to ride away, but you what you're essentially doing is trying to get me to be mean to women. I don't have to be mean to women for you to get yours off. Like, that ain't how that go. I was never trying to be mean because my delivery is straight up and down. Right. You know, so, right. or they, she's trying to hold women accountable. Like, like no, like, it, it, and it, what I'm saying is just common sense because in actuality, like, we're seeing every time one woman go, oh, these are my standards. Here she come eight months, nine months down the line with a man talking about how he dogged her out and she went above and beyond. And she, you know, like it, it, it just don't make sense. Like I find more of a irritation with trying to use me as a catalyst to be um, some type of punisher for mm. women in general because you still want women to like you you still want women to be attracted to you you still want the leverage of you know trying to date certain women or get a certain women inbox or things like that right you'll come on my page and talk all that hot shit but then you want to pretend like on your page you this good upstanding morale guy exactly because 
situations not going the way you want. And I can tell you one thing about women, as much as they like to lie on media and say something different, women, especially black women, mm-hmm. love stern, outspoken black men. I and it's the difference between stern, outspoken black men than a sassy catalyst who's always in women business. Right. I'm about a man who is going to say exactly what he means and there is no argument or debate about it. But some of these men, they stand behind me and they're using me to get off their gripes. They're using me to have their grievances open up and spread their wounds from them being used, from them being betrayed or them being hurt or, you know, like she's the second coming of Kevin Samuels, which I've been here just as long as he has. And it's like, (laughs) you can't use me to get your shit off because I'm still a woman, number one. And number two, that's never what my message was for. Exactly. Don't try to use me as a weapon to get over because you're saying all these hurtful things in my comments, but then you're trying to convince me that I'm the best woman in the world. How do you know that? I never not said I ain't have no standards for me. And I never not said I ain't have no requirements for men. So never did you think I was walking apart. I right. just have a more understanding mentality that I'm not afraid to voice or vocalize. But there are a lot of women who think like me. I have an audience of just as many women who think like me and just afraid to say it as mm-hmm. the women who's standing around trying to be girls, girls. And they want to run up a bag and give exactly. you all the motivation. So it is what it is. You got the fake motivation. I cannot. <laughs> I mean, uh, I ain't gonna lie about it. So the common sense factor, right? When it comes to common sense, and from a man's point of view, right? Again, I'm an '80s baby from the South. Mm-hmm. The idea of taking care of what needs to be taken care of as a man was a given, right? <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how social media and, and media in general has made that a, a issue or even working together as a, a family. Like, I've been married for, golly, we've been together since 08, so Obama, and <laughs> married since 2011. So I've, I've grown with my wife, right? And mm-hmm. we've kind of learned how to communicate in a, a proper manner. But I don't see that... I don't see that that's being uh, pushed in people's faces. Of course, I tell her that, and she'd be like, well, no, no, it is, it is. But I'm like, in in masses, it's not. It's just, it feels like it's a lot of separation going on. and it's Intentional with that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Intentional. So, we got the preliminary out the way, right? <laughs> I didn't expect some of that, but we here. We here now. So, when, and I'm, I'm asking you this question from a, a dude telling another dude how to do something. Because my average listener is like 18 to 35 male, 75 percent male. Right. How can how can dudes go about approaching certain women the right way without rubbing the feathers too bad? You basically are asking me, like, what can men do in order to get women, period. And, not, and not from a not from a, a relationship standpoint, not dating. Right. OK, I'm just I'm, I'm just existing. Right. Let me give you an example. Uh, so I'm one of the people I'm how I am now. I'm this seven o'clock in the morning until I go to sleep. I'm this mm-hmm. all the time, right? So when I approach a, a woman from a just chill Walmart, there was a, you know, the immediate response that I normally get <laughs> is this. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And I just keep it moving. Now, I've done that when I'm with my wife, and she'd be like, don't even say nothing to me. <laughs> that's, what, that's the energy you're you going to get. I don't even know why you try. So I'm trying to get outside of that. Like, what can men do? Is there is there even a right way to approach a woman to get? Uh. No, it's not because there ain't no rules when you attractive. If you attractive, a woman would damn near harass you to make you get her your attention. Uh. And I mean, of course, yeah, you may not have been noticed or um, 
other things like that, but I, it's going to sound crazy, right? And I'm going to say this, and this is probably going to get some backlash, but reintroducing chivalry. Mm. Like, if that's a woman that you really genuinely want, be unintentionally and unwavering like you have no motivation behind anything just be nice to her Mm. and ironically that's not something a lot of women are used to they're not used to random men just being nice to them i am but it's how i carry myself i see i carry myself on an approachable manner um I, i am welcoming to men i do say thank you matter of fact I'll give you um, just this past um, Sunday. Was it Sunday? It could have been, it could have, no, it was Saturday. Saturday, the game was on. One of the games was on. My cousin and I went out. uh, We went to Twin Peaks, her and I. And as we were leaving, we watched two black men come into the door and they were standing near security. And this other guy, he was um, not black. I'll just put it to you like that. I ain't going to say what he was, but he wasn't black. All right, something other. Yeah, he was getting really aggressive, really confrontational. And um, one of the black men, he had to have been like 5'10", real stocky, real broad. The other one, I know he was like all of like 6'3"-ish, you know, you know, solid guy, straight up and down. But these weren't no little men. These weren't no little men. Right. So as we're going outside, them and security's going outside, they just come through the door and they were coming to enjoy themselves, have a good time. And um we I'm listening to, I'm watching the whole entire thing because we walked through the crowd and I said something to one of the guys, the taller one, and then I noticed that he was going at the shorter black guy, the stocky one. He was going at him. And so as we're walking away, I turn around and look because I'm like, okay, they getting closer. I'm watching the mannerisms. Okay. And I started walking back towards the men. And he, the guy, the other, he had his wife with him. And security was out there. We had an establishment. Everybody's drunk. You know, I live in Texas. Right. So you do what you want that information when it comes to the police. Right, right, right. So it's the holiday weekend. I walked back over to where the men were. And my cousin was like, what are you doing? Paris, stop. Don't go over there. I was like, you're not fine. And I went right over there to that black man and I told him, don't you hear him? You let security take that. Mm. Go in there and enjoy yourself. And, you know, go ahead and go have a good night. I'm more than certain if I would have stayed, he wouldn't have mind, like, you know, comping or everything. And he watched me walk, walk to my car. He ensured that I got there safe because I walked past the man who was aggressive. Like, I'm watching him push his wife and everything. Like, he's cussing her out. Oh, he he's is. He's belligerent. He's very drunk. But I told him, like, hey, don't do not do that. Go on, go up in there. Enjoy your night. You ain't got to spend this weekend in jail. Gave me a fist bump. We good. He watched me walk to my car and made sure I got there safe. As I was pulling off, he waved to me, stood outside. Like, he made sure that I was good. Right. But I wasn't trying to make it more than what like it's okay to genuinely be nice to people right and that's right you don't have with men or have with women anymore and i know it's because men are afraid to yeah but i also know that women are so guarded nowadays because they don't really have a real sense of confidence unless they're with a crowd uh-huh. and that's the issue so it's like when you're getting a man who's randomly approaching you at, at some place all bets are off unless you're attracted to him initially. Like, and, and it's crazy to think because you really don't know what that may blossom into right. off of the shit of being vain. And now you got so many men that the only time they will approach a woman is when they got a motive. She fine, let me get at her. But why not just interact with women like that on a regular and right, then you right, right. feel so irritated or so annoyed when one you're getting rejected or two when you're dealing with a woman who is fine and you gave her a chance and now your your temper short because every time you nice to a woman it came with a motive uh, so i think reenacting chivalry could really be a huge game changer in my humble opinion because imagine how many women get the door open for them now 
So when you telling her to smile, what she doing? Giving you attitude. Mm. But she's not even used to you being nice to her on a regular. So gotcha. she don't know how to act. Gotcha. How are you gotcha. teaching her how to act? Hmm. So. Okay. All right. I agree with what you said, right? A lot of what you said, I agree with. But I'm, I think I've come to the conclusion just from having, uh, of course, bad relationships in college. I'm, I'll be 40 in, in November, so it lets you know <laughs> what, what time it was when I was in college. So having, having those certain relationships in college and then graduating and then having certain business relationships and then I come from the music business. So we're mm-hmm. taught in, from the music business until it's always just been like, all right, watch your back. They, yeah. hey, the mother about to stab you. They're going to stab you. Oh, look at you. Nigga got stabbed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for, for me, I've learned to adopt the being okay with somebody having motives, right? Long as it's up front. You're not everybody. Mm. And the problem is now we got too many worlds conflated. Like now when it, like, even when, when I watched the um, whole, thing about the bus driver i actually did a whole segment about the whole bus driver thing mm-hmm. oh my nine to five men yeah. why why are we attacking them them the ones that's keeping the economy run yeah. period like it, it's not your everyday entrepreneur everything that you idealize what you sitting around catalyzing as a real man that's a nine to five what are we doing exactly you know so when you talking about what you anticipate, you come from the music industry. When you're talking music or sports, entertainment, automatically we understand men have all the power. They have the leverage. They can literally exist and women are going to throw themselves at them because it's something to obtain there. Okay. Stated money. It's something to obtain. A comfort of living. But when you talk in those men, right? Like that. that's kind of like you're wrong going to be it's good as long as you in that segment. When you talk in regular everyday average men, they don't want to be taken advantage of because right. their 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 metrics for getting to where they are are a lot more strenuous than yours. And it's not to discount the act of what you're doing. Everybody's working hard, right? But right, right, right. you're in a specified area that that the women are kind of like additional accessories. Mm. so regardless of how you you choose to portray or interact with that woman you're still going to get what you want in the end that's not necessarily going to be the same end goal for a man who is working nine to five and not just necessarily caring about his money but you know he he just prized different things he could really pride family he could really pride friendship he could really pride companionship you know he just could be an upstanding individual he could really just enjoy being a well-renowned individual and when you walking into people with motives nowadays because their egos are so conflated by what they see they're having these other people show them this is possible this is possible this is possible where does that leave this guy you know they matter too right 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 i agree i the funny thing is i've seen and and my wife has been down the roller coaster with me right so Mm -hmm. She, we met, I won't say at the peak of the music business part, but mm-hmm. she saw all, like the first foreclosure, she saw that. The re, right. The repos, trying to figure out what's next, right? And like even now, I I will not let my, my current nine to five go. <laughs> just, I don't care how much extra stuff I got going on, right? I'm going to just keep that joint because we got kids now. and ins- It makes more sense. Right. And insurance is a thing. But having a regular job has taught me I can't say it's regular it's still kind of it's regular it's I got a clock in every day so I'm gonna say it's regular all right you got a boss and yeah. right right so I will say I've learned through having a, a regular nine to five that a lot of the stuff that we put emphasis on from the music business when it comes to real life <laughs> it's like okay why you do that like even the idea of disregarding certain people as women would disregard dudes, that's a norm. In the music business, that's norm. But you come into that office every morning. <laughs> you have to acknowledge people. Right, right. 
you have to. And you have to. It, that's very rude. It, and it talks about the culture and the shape shift, but that's just uh, the thing that a lot of jobs have input. Right. When you seeing people, you're walking past them. It's very uncommon for you to walk past someone and not speak when you make eye contact with them, unless they're busy or you see, you know, you see that they're talking to someone or heading in a certain direction or that's just not common office culture, but that's Southern hospitality. When you go into the places, you speak to people, right? You've been all speaking to people all day. <laughs> you know, exactly. Like, it's, exactly. It's just common culture. You address them, you acknowledge them, you make them, you make them feel like they're seen. Right, right, right. So tell me this. This is a, a somewhat semi-personal question. What gets your your creative flowing? I don't know. You know, <laughs> like honestly, my brain just works like an engine. It just starts. Like I don't I, I just think it's just inherent. Like that's just who I am as a person. I get an idea and then I'm kind of like Lil Wayne. Okay. Everybody always be like, right, 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 right. I'm not a writer. Mm. A lot of everything that I do, it's one to three hot takes. I'm editing and I'm posting. Okay. okay. I don't, I don't have to do a lot of, you know, um, it's not, manufacture okay it's very organic and and again that's just who i am as an individual and um i've learned to just convey my message to get my point across really precisely like you don't need a lot of things or whatever in order to help people understand your point of view but i i can't say what gets me going creatively because i've always just kind of been this way like i've always been a person who has my own style i've always been a person who kind of stood out i never really went into the crowd even my friends to a degree some of them had their own status and popularity mm -hmm. and it's like i just always have been my own person so i can't i can't really tell you what's the it thing like what makes her I can't tell you that because that's just simply who I am. So do you do you see like current events and, and it makes you want to respond? Or do you? Not all the time. Okay. okay. Sometimes I sit and watch things. I sit and watch them play out because nowadays everybody reactionary to everything. <laughs> right, right, so right. So it, it literally don't matter what it is. Like so you can say some of the smallest things is going to get people going. You know, so when you're touching or attacking certain topics or things like that, it's like some of the stuff keeps getting regurgitated over and over again. Like the whole 50-50 thing, it's, it's, it came back up, you know, and I made a video about 50-50 and that video still pushing the circulation on Facebook alone. Mm. It's pushing the circulation so much I can't even see when I get new comments and I got a notification for new comments today. That video is well over three or four months old. Okay. I, I really don't know, but I can say that content today is kind of like music today. It's hot when it's hot, but it died real fast. Mm. I don't make that type of content. I can tell. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. So when it comes to something dying and, and coming up real quick, uh, do you think it's a way that we can kind of build a higher tolerance? Because I just posted a post. Uh, what's the girl name? Uh, Elizabeth Pipko, right? She's She ain't want to talk about it, which I was like, all right, it's cool. But again, I like to provide a platform for conversations with everybody, right? You are You are my strong i won't say strong because i hate i even hate even that that's an irritating situation saying a strong black woman because my mama was that and now i have to compensate for her being strong in my 40s and her now in her 60s because like yo you should have took a little bit of time for you built a certain relation you know and just cultivate that side of you but now you playing catch up so i want to eliminate that idea strong black woman i won't get rid of that Right. But just building a tolerance, is there something that can be done where we build the tolerance for 
relationships and conversation without without <laughs> people interjecting some random idea because this how they made it made them feel like this and this just is what it is and i'm gonna say it and you bet not say nothing back to me and respond you know what i mean like can we groom people to not be that way this not gonna be an answer that i ain't gonna hold you yeah but the way we gonna do it is by shitting certain people up everybody don't need a voice mm. bottom line it stops there okay everybody don't need a voice now we have a society where everybody feel like whatever they say is necessary to be heard right everybody don't need a voice <laughs> And when we can minimize how many people have the authority to speak, we can start domineering and getting control of certain situations again. Because we didn't have this much, we didn't have this much of a ruckus when it came to influence until people were allowed the freedom of a vast expression. Mm-hmm. It's some hidden gems, though. It's some hidden gems in it. You're not gonna find all them hidden gems because you're not looking in the right places. But I stand on like everybody don't need a voice. You got some of the strongest uh, mental, poorly thinking, and directive people that are silent. They understand what it means in order to not necessarily be uh, a follower, but be a background character. Mm. And we don't have too many people who understand the magnitude of the background characters. Right. Like right. everybody want to have a mic. Everybody want to be the lead. Everybody want to be on be Beyonce. <laughs> you know, everybody want to be the lead singer. And it's just, it's not necessary. Like your part is important too. Right. You 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 can't be a Wendy Williams, you know, it just it don't. You, it, it don't hit that way but that's where people are going like everybody want to be the top mm. and the comedy steve is the most successful facts but that didn't mean that said dl or steve or uh bernie weren't just as important and they still get money <laughs> everybody still got something everybody has their role to play and right now we got too many people in an echo chamber with regurgitated topics. And another issue is that everybody takes everything someone says as opposed to just ingesting it as a different perspective. Right. Now you need giving me advice. I didn't give you no advice. I just told you how I felt. <laughs> I, I, I felt, felt about it. I, I didn't give you no advice. Where did you get that from? There is nothing on any of my platforms that says relationship coach, advisor, none of that it guru it never therapist i never subscribe to none of those things right but because i do speak you know with such passion and i do speak with with such certainty and i'm very much so directed and forward people are applying those titles to me so it gives other people who are not as um strong in their personality or not as you know just super um Un, un, the, super influential. Right, I will right. be a, super influential, but they have a, a micro audience. They're applying themselves to those titles. Mm. We don't need that. I agree. If anything, we just need community. We don't need a lot of people telling other people what to do. We just simply need everybody's line of thinking to come together. The thing that you do the best, you put your hand in the pot. And we're going to take what everybody do the best and strengthen the community. Right, right. Everybody got to talk to do that. What you're saying really feels like, again, you a lot of what you're saying is what I've been preaching for the majority of this year, right? Tell these people I ain't never talking to you before today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prophet. She a prophet. <laughs> Now, people, we, never talk we, we ain't never talk. We literally never talk. I promise y'all. But it's just, for me, right, I'm looking at it from a, a overall holistic standpoint. Mm-hmm. And when, when you talk about community and people playing their part and playing their role, one of my first, first gigs as a, a music producer was co-producing somebody's record. 
and I had to play the background. And you bet not say nothing about being being one of the people on the on on the record because it's not your situation. Like this is mine. I'm gonna pay you to do your part, mm-hmm. and then we're gonna do this again, and then hopefully you build some credit, and the people want to work with you. So naturally, it put me in a space of being okay. Like I, don't, I think probably in the late 2000s is when producers started being like in the forefront. And I yeah. had I had an issue with it then. I was like, yo. These niggas is like, are y'all artists? Like, y'all the artists now? Like, what y'all I, doing? We, we never needed. I never we, needed to know who were writers. I never needed to know who were producers. I never needed to know who creative directors were. And now I know some of these names, and I'm like, oh, they're so pivotal. But you're doing nothing. Like, exactly. you're doing. You're not the artist, bro. Don't nobody care. Had no idea. <laughs> Babyface had as many hits. It, as exactly. Had I wish I had the person. bomb. I don't have a bomb for Until you. Versus, I had no idea. And that was the beauty of it because you are a silent talent. Right. You know, like you get to be the artist when you want to be the artist. You get to jump out when you want to jump out. Another one is Seven Streeter. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize how incredibly talented she is. Everybody yep. thinks that she should be the artist. But she's wrote some of your best, most favorite top chart radio hits. She's literally like the second coming of Candy Burst. Exactly. Exactly. So for, for me, I learned that early. Like, mm-hmm. no, you, <laughs> you shut the hell up. You get on that keyboard. <laughs> you produce that record. Once we finish, I got four writers over here to do this. Once we put it together, give it to a label. Now they got the money. They're going to mm-hmm. put the money behind it and y'all going to get a piece of what we come out with. And people say, oh, well, no. Y'all just need to get everything. Like you the you the one that did it. You did the work. And I'm like, I feel like that's translated in all industries now, though. And the, yeah. the relationship coaching, the social media, like, yo, it's so many dope people that's like marketers that I've I've met over the years. I'm just like, yo, y'all are cool with being marketers, driving S class and, and Ferraris even, and nobody ever knew. Nobody, yeah. nobody knows your brand. They know. Like they just, Jay Versace. Jay Versace was like a a real social media influencer at one point in time. He had his own little swagger. You know, he was very much so a uh, content creator. But he found his niche with producing. Yep. And making beats. Yep. And like, he's probably making way more doing that and getting his silence and getting his piece to the point where. Now his posting isn't critical. People aren't sitting there going through the comments, um, having to having to have an opinion about his behavior or right, right. how he's dressed or you know what is um, his sexuality because all he does is he goes and he goes to work. He goes to put into he's influencing people in another way. But mm-hmm. again, like he's to me, he's one of those people who understands how necessary the background characters are because he really could be just as monks as high as our top influences today. He right. was one of the, the earlier pioneers to social media. So change pace a little bit. When it comes to other women, this is going to be a two part question. So just building, okay. building your brain. So when it comes to seeing a woman, I don't say a woman, I won't say black woman, just a woman in general, right? Mexican, Indian, I don't care what it is. What impress you? Is it anything that, that you see in a woman and be like, yo, like, yo, you, you did that? You know what? <laughs> this gonna sound crazy. Like, I'm kind of um, a little bit to a degree praise and strength, but it's really overcoming adversity. Cause you don't find too women, too many women who can do that and not have a woe is me story mm. or not feel like that they should have been entitled to a little bit more leverage of comfort. Women don't have discipline. I don't care what culture you come when from. When you say discipline, which, from what standpoint? Relationship. What what does discipline entail? You mean that's, that's oh, a broad word? <laughs> discipline in general. More times often than not, as a woman, we're doing things because 
that's what life has pushed us into. Mm. But in actuality, even when you hear about the stay-at-home moms, they got complaints about staying at home. And that's a privilege in America. But when you hear like women who are getting up, going to work, and she's the boss, and this, that, and the third, and she's, you know, bringing in three different revenues, and she's a single mom, and this, that, and the third, it's like you're wanting praise for those accomplishments or overcoming adversity. But I tell you, you know, it's God truth. Mm-hmm. My cousin, Sierra Chantel, on every platform. Shouts out to her. She's one of the most commendable women I know in my life. And I say that because she does live a comfortable lifestyle. Okay. She has two children. And never once, as, as long as I have been around her, and I, since a baby, like, been around her since a baby, like, this is my real life cousin. I've never heard her once complain about being a single mother. I've never heard it, like never heard it. And I'm talking about, I remember when I was a kid, because my cousin is like, we we got a distance in between us like nine years or so. Okay. She would be one of the first people walking around with baby fat on. She was one of the first people that had like a rush car. Like her mom really, you know, stepped for her, okay. you know, like um, she's always had a high end lifestyle okay. even though we come from the country even throughout her struggles she's learned to manage her money accordingly she's learned to you know monopolize herself and put herself in different positions mm-hmm. but despite what she went through with her child her children's dad i've never heard her bash him i've never heard her talk about how hard it is to be a parent i've never heard her want praise for being a parent Wow. And her son is, I'm talking like, we're Balenciagas to school oh. just on the day. Oh. <laughs> I mean, she got a house. I mean, uh, it, it drive a Benz. She, her Benz was the first Benz truck I ever drove. Like, that that woman really bought a business. Okay. And she inspires me in so many ways to just keep pursuing because even in the naysaying, right? Like, you can overcome adversity and still be happy and right, not bitter, right. and not a reflection of your experiences. Right. That's what I mean by what inspires me with women. And she's not the only one. There's a group of women that are from Arkansas as well that um, I know that have a business, Seafood on the Run, mm. Demetri and Erica, sisters. When I tell you... We need some food, by the way. I'm so inspired by those women because it's how they implement a plan of action. They 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 execute every time. I'm talking about driving Mercedes, driving Cadillacs, like um, have nice houses. They're, they're they they're bonded, like they're sisters. They're tied together. The children are watching them. The children are seeing them run their business. The children are seeing them be entrepreneurs and get up and do the hustle and bustle or even their makeup line. I wear, you know, one of their makeup lines all all the time. So it's like I'm I'm watching them execute, but it's not only not that, not that they not only want praise, but also too that they don't allow their success to be the catalyst of their character. They take a step back and they still know who they are as an individual that's not how they define themselves when i talk to those women they're not defined by their money they're not defined by their business they're not defined by uh them being in a single state or in a relationship state it's this is who i am you know you're getting to know me and that is an extension of who I am, but it's not who I am. Right. So that inspires me when I can see women be multifaceted, when I can see women who are extremely disciplined, who stay the course, who know how to execute, but also too, they know how to simply enjoy being themselves and gotcha. they don't allow things to speak to them for them. Mm, okay. 
I love we don't it. see that nowadays. Right, right. I think a girl tell you she's walk up to you is I'm a bad bitch. What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? Yo, it's so irritating. It's honestly, what does that mean? Honestly, honestly, from from my middle aged self, <laughs> I when I when I I was still doing sessions, right? And mm-hmm. I think about three years ago, I just cut it off because I was like, "Look, this is this is dumb, dumb. You're wasting my time, right?" I noticed that that was the conversation a lot. She she a bad bitch. I'm getting I'm getting to it. This this and that. And mm-hmm. then the fellas would be like, "Look at my bitch." This and I'm just like, "Yo, like, yeah, rap about the sky, like <laughs> rap Real. rap about well, something else." Right, right. Rap about something else because I'm just like, I don't feel like none of this promotes the longevity of black folk. None of it does, like, as far as what's being pushed. So, second half of that question. Mm -hmm. What impressed you about men? Character. Mm -hmm. Always. The character of a man gonna stand out to me over everything. If he can be honest, true to his word, stand on his principles. He don't um, allow his status to define him. He stay unwavering in every situation. He can be fair, even tone. He don't get influenced by the masses. He don't get influenced by his friends too often. He's, you know, um, easygoing, but, you know, can make decisions, but he ain't too hasty. It's something about the character of a man. Like, when you solid as a man, that don't that don't that don't go nowhere. It ain't nothing you can do with a solid man. How many how many different exchanges do you think it would take for somebody or a fe- yeah take for a female to see that? Either she can or she can't. What he proven? Mm. A man who got good character. What he proven? Because mm. that's a waiver. Like you 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 this person all the time. Right. Either it's the initial thing or she grow to see it over time. But if she if she don't see it, that ain't for. Everybody ain't supposed to see that. And so when I talk about like the character of a man, like not even him having proper discernment, I'm talking about like how he's showing up in his personnel and right. not this whole fabricated real man shit that people be trying to offset. Like, oh, he's going to deal with my bullshit. He's going to, you know, Cool, you know, assage my feelings and he's going to accept me as I am now. Nah, like he's standing tall and he's standing solid in what he believes, his principles, how he's lying, his morals, like he ain't being um manipulated okay. in order to just go along with the crowd or get the bitches or you know, like he ain't doing right. all that. it. It is what it is. Like he he good with it, he good without it. But if she don't see that, she's not supposed to. Okay. Just like every woman ain't supposed to be submissive to every man you come across. You Lord. will be to every man. Hold up. Do it again. Uh, that's going to be the clip right there. <laughs> that's the clip right there. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> every woman ain't supposed to see your character. She ain't supposed to see it because if it's not, if, it's, if she's not for you, she's not for you. The same way a woman not supposed to be submissive for every man. You wouldn't give your body to every man. So a man should not be trying to prove his character to a woman the same way a woman should not be trying to be submissive to every man. You got to know your player. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree 100%. And we're approaching our time. So I got I got a few more things that I want to talk about. Just a few more things. Um, But on the character piece, right? I'm just, mm-hmm. and this just me venting for a second. I've noticed that a lot of and I don't I hate to make it racy, right? But it is what it is. A lot okay. of a lot of my coworkers, um, a lot of my guys that I might work because I flip houses too. So okay. a lot of the guys that I work with and I staff, I'm noticing certain relationships differences, right? On my my white side of things they be like oh man my my government name is michael crawford so they say crawford crawford how could you do like i don't even know how do you deal with that with the with y'all women because like i can't do that so i I ask questions before i before i respond 
taken up for my my women, right? What you mean by that? Well, you know, how we do it, like the 50-50 thing. They're okay with it. They've been doing it. You, yeah. You know, Carol, you know, I make 50 and Carol makes another 38 and we put it together and we do do all this, right? With the Hispanics. I've I've literally staffed them and they'll come out, the woman to climb up the ladder with the sheet, with the yeah. the yeah. on the back. Maybe and there's, there's still a, a point of, of reference or there's still some respect as that's my husband even though we're working on this together that's my husband and which, I, I follow what he say you want this you want some of this messy soup that we got? <laughs> how y'all eat the messy soup the Mexicans <laughs> I'm sorry I'm venting the baby bringing like a soup on the job site and just sit down to eat it and I'm like yo you gonna have a runs after you eat that like why you do that but anyway um how <laughs> How can, how can we start getting into the space where that's okay? Where 50-50 ain't even a conversation, it's a given. I'm going to fuck you up with this one. Now, before you talk, before you talk. Because <laughs> I have been, I, I talk hard to the guys. Like I'm, y'all need to get y'all shit together. Go get the money to did this and this. Don't expect for her to do nothing except for love you, provide you know, provide a peace of mind. Like I do that to them just to get them going to, you know, go after it. But if he got sick, because it happens a lot. If he got sick, you want to make sure that she can handle her own. And in handling her own, the 50-50 idea should not be a, God, I got to do 50-50? Like, you ain't no, what kind of man are you? You asking me to do, how can we fix this? 50-50 not a real thing. Okay, expound. So, what I subscribe to is that um, there are some things that my partner does well. There are some things that I do well. What we need to be doing is taking what we do the best and putting those together so we can both reach our end goal. Mm. Um, when you're talking money, money has been thrown around and we've had this idea of push like Black women have been conditioned to struggle up. And I had a conversation and I, I discovered that that wasn't necessarily the truth. Okay. I've never grown up around people that told me be with a bum. And I come from the blackest of the black of anything. Okay. I've never had that. What I've heard from women is all my life, you a fool if you don't ask a man for some money and you fucking him. I've heard that all my life. Right. And I've heard from men. You don't need to be with no man who can't take care of you. Right. So it's like when you're talking struggle love or you're talking money, this idea has come up that women are inter intertwining. I'm with a man when he's down and out versus I'm with my partner that I'm growing with. And they don't know how to differentiate between the two. Mm. now when you get conversations like 50 50 and somebody's asking her for input she's like hold on i done, I done, done 100 all by myself before i done took care of a man i don't want to take care of no man no more and you're not taking care of a man you're building a foundation to stabilize something going forward mm. and that's not the same thing but when you get the asking questions like you want to be a partner or you want to be a roommate. Now it becomes, you know, murky waters. Like now you need your name on the lease or the mortgage. Mm -hmm. Now you want to have say so in X, Y, and Z. And then you're making the assumption that other cultures are run like this and that's not the truth. Like no, it's not. The, studies, the studies of America when it comes to money don't even say that. Nope. The studies of America when it comes to money don't even say that women are staying at home and pocketing everything and their husbands are, no, it don't. 
It don't say that. That's not what inflation say. That's not what uh, <laughs> the wages say. I don't get care if you look on blackdemographics.com, if you look on the Census Bureau, or, and I don't care who paycheck you're looking at. That ain't what it say. And that's why even in the Gabrielle situation, when she spoke out about 50-50, so many women went, what the hell are you doing that for? And it's right. because I've been trying to tell you motherfuckers that, <laughs> you know, two incomes better than one i ain't never seen what one income was pushing everything and then the person behind that 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 non-income had more leverage than the person who was pushing the main income right it don't it, it never has been right but you can't boss yourself up or boss your life up off the contingency that the only way you're gonna have a successful relationship is if you're getting everything and he's getting nothing in return. Because anytime I hear women say that, more times often than not, it's coming from a delineation of at one point in time, you went above and beyond for a man who wasn't at the, the stage to reciprocate that for whatever reason. Right. Whatever reason. And now every man after him got to pay for that. So you're not even willing to meet a person halfway. Nobody's asking you to struggle. What we are asking is to be realistic. 50-50 don't exist because there are going to be times where you meet women who are in relationships with men and she manages money better than him. Yep. Facts. Or there are going to be times where you meet a person in a situation where, and ironically, men cook better than women. So every woman ain't got to be in the kitchen. You get me? Right, like, right. Every woman ain't got to be in the kitchen. Or we're in a society now where most men are more self-sufficient than their grandpas. They know how to iron their own clothes and take it to the cleaners. Yep. They know how to fold clothes. You know, they know how to upkeep their car, upkeep their lawn, upkeep their inside of their house. Like, okay, so if you're saying a man is doing all these things for himself and you need his finances, and we already know men work longer and more than women based off of a, a substantial amount of reasons, what the hell do he need you for sitting around just collecting the check? At that point, he ain't got nothing but a child. So, if if he's treating the relationship like that, right? Right. How can we fix it? Well, there is no fix. Because if a man chooses to say, I want to have a relationship where I am taking care of everything, and I do want to have a hands-on inside my household, even when I'm not at work. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay. The issue what we're having is every woman has this idea that every man should think like that. And that's what she got like fucked up. The same way we got a lot of women giving pushback on women simply having a modesty about themselves. So now it's a problem when you're getting into a relationship with a man who's not necessarily asking you to change who you are, but he is asking you to be a little bit more self-conscious about the fact that you're no longer single. So you probably should dress and represent your partner in a certain type of way. So it it can't be this entitlement of, well, I got a man who does all of this and I'm fine. I just have to exist. And then you turn around and you're not willing to compromise. You're not willing to, make you know any type of adjustments or anything like that because you will have so many women when they get mad they don't want to cook but if he get mad it ain't no discussion if he can pay the rent how the fuck that work are we Listen, doing this yeah. <laughs> i didn't tell her to say none of this <laughs> what we doing <laughs> no so okay so my thing you don't get to pitch your role it's not and and that's that's one of the things that I guess when I when I say something about it, it's taken as, oh, you trying to you trying to cake for the fellas, you trying to call women out, stay out of women's business, um, you ain't no t- and uh, I'm like you, I'm not a life coach and not a nothing. I am a business coach. I, I I help people get to the bag. I know about that. I understood when you were like, why why I kind of heard you getting on getting on me about me. I got you. I understood. <laughs> So I am I am a coach when it comes to that and very specific a specific area. But when it comes to marriage and relationships, I'm just telling you what what 
I've done so far, what we've done, and certain things right. we got. Not license is something. It's not relationship advice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have license so, and so, but for for me, I think, and that's something we've we've grown to uh, to realize. Like I've realized that when it comes to my wife, right? Uh-huh. When we started, you know how it goes. When you start, you in it. You, both of y'all in the music. She traveling. She doing tours. She singing with people. I'm doing stuff in New York. I'm in L.A., Miami. And, and then at some point, we link up and we chill. Then we go by separate ways again, right? Mm-hmm. But then when it comes to 